Hello. If you are asked to find the square root of this number, square root of 65, 150, and 97, they are all not a perfect square. We, you might be tempted to start or point a calculator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this without the use of calculator, and you'll get approximate values of this square root. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends and colleagues, and remember to subscribe to my channel for more of this content. Now we'll start with the first, and the first is the square root of the square root of 64, 65. Now, if we're asked to find the square root of 65 and you're asked to point your calculator, square root of 65 is going to give us 8.062. If you have a calculator, point it and you find out that that's exactly what you're going to get. Now, to solve this without the use of a calculator, all we need to do is to uh, remember the fact that we are going to look for a value or a square, a perfect square that is closer to 65. And we see that 64 is a perfect square because 8 square is going to give us 64. And 64 is close to what? Is close to 65 because we will have 65 subtracting 64, we're going to have 1. So 8 to the power of 2 is a perfect square. So what we are going to do is to have the value of 8 plus this one we've got in, which is the subtraction of the original value minus the perfect square will give us 1 divided by 2, uh, which, is always, uh, which is always constant, multiplied by this value, which is 8. And when you do that, you're going to have this to become 8 plus 1 divided by 16. So if you simplify this, what do you have? Let's take uh, 1 divided by 16. If we take the square root of 1 divided by 16, 1 is going to be inside and 16 will be out. 1 divided by 16 is not possible. I'll have a 0 point and then I'll add a 0 here. 1 divided by 6, 10 divided by 16 is still not possible. I'll have a 0 here and then I'll put a 0 here. 100 divided by 16 is simply going to give me 6, right? And then 16 times 6 will give me 96, right? I'll have 96. So if you subtract this, you're going to have this is going to give us 10, which is 4, right? And this is going to give us not. 4 divided by 16 is not possible. We'll add a 0 here. 40 divided by 16 is going to give us 2, right? 16 times 2 is going to give me 32. If you subtract this, you're going to find out that this is going to give you 8. 8 divided by 16 is going to give you what? It's not possible then we're going to put a zero here, right? Then 80 divided by 16 is going to give me five. What? We get a perfect value. This is going to give us five. 16 times five is going to give us 80. And if you subtract this, you have zero and what? Zero. So that expression is going to give us, uh, make this expression to become eight plus a zero point zero six two five. So what do we have here? This is now going to give us 8.0625. And then if you take the approximate value of this, you see that it is closer to the value you got when you used a calculator. So that means this is perfectly done. Let's consider the square root of 150. If we are asked to find the square root of 150. All we'll do is, if you point your calculator, you're going to have this to give you 12.247. Do that right now, and you'll find out. Now, how do we find this without, solve this without using calculator? The first thing you need to do is to look for a perfect square root, that uh, a value, perfect square that is close to 150. At 150, above 150, we'll have 144, right? 144 is close to 150. And 144 is going to give us 12 squared, right? Good. So 150 minus 144 is going to give us what? That is going to give us the value 
uh, the value 6. So 6 is not too large, so we can use that. So that value is going to give us 12 plus 1, uh, 6, right? Divide by 2, which is constant, multiplied by this, which is 12. So that expression will now give us, that expression will now give us 12 plus 6 divided by this times this. 12 times 2 is going to give us 24. So let's simplify this. If we simplify this, we'll have this value to become 12 plus 6 here 1. 6 here is going to give me 4, right? So that will give me 1 divided by 4. So this expression is going to give me 12 plus 1 divided by 4. If we analyze this expression, we're going to have 1 divided by 4. For 1 divided by 4 is not possible. We'll have a 0, 0.0, right? 10 divided by 4 is going to give me a 2 because 4 times 2 is going to give me 8. So if we subtract, we're going to have a 2 remaining. 2 divided by 4 is not possible. We'll put a 0. 20 divided by 4 is going to give me what? 5, right? 5 times 4 is going to give me 20. So if I subtract this, I'm going to have a dot and a dot. So that value is going to give me 12 plus 0 0.25, which is the decimal result. If we simplify this, we're going to have this to become 12.25, which is the solution to that expression. Now, if you compare it to the value you got using a calculator, you see that this method gives you an approximate what value for that uh, for that uh, square root. Great. Now let's analyze the third one. What what if we are asked to look for the square root of ninety seven? Point your calculator. What do the square root gives you? It gives you a nine point eight four eight eight. Right. Good. Now let's look at this. Which perfect uh, square do we have that can give us, that can be close to 97? If we look at one that is lower than 97, we'll have 81, right? 81 is going to give us nine square. And 81 is very far from 87 because 87 minus 81 is going to give us a 16, right? Which is very large. So we're not going to do that. Now let's consider a perfect square that is above 97. Uh, we'll have a hundred, right? 100 is equal to 10 to the power of two, right? 100 minus 97 is going to give us a three, which is uh, approximately small number. So if we apply that here, you're going to find out that this expression will now give us uh, 10, which is the perfect square minus is no longer going to be plus because we are choosing a square root that is larger than the required value. Now recall from this other expression, we use a perfect, we use a square root that is lower than the original expression. So this one is higher than the original expression. So we're going to use a negative sign. Take note of that. If this becomes a negative, we'll have the value three, divided by 2, which is always constant, multiplied by the 10, right? And this expression will now be 10 minus 3 divided by 20. This expression is going to give us 3 inside right and 20 outside. 3 divided by 20 is not possible. We'll have a 0 point, right? And then we'll put a 0 here. 30 divided by 20 is going to give us a 1, right? 20 times 1 is going to give us 20. So if we subtract this, we'll have this to become 10, right? 10 divided by 20 is not possible. We'll put a 0, right? 100 divided by 20 is going to give us 5, right? 5 times 20 is going to give us 100. And when we subtract this, that will give us 0, 0. So this value is going to give us 10 minus 0 0.15.
if you subtract 0 0.15 from 10, you're going to have this to become a 9.8 watts, 85. And that is the result to that expression. So if you go up there, you're going to see that the result is an approximate value of this expression. When you approximate this, it makes this y. So if you want to get the approximate value of any mathematical square root or any square root value, you can follow these procedures to find the exact approximate value of that mass expression. I hope this helps. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with friends and colleagues, and remember to subscribe to my channel for more simplified mass content. Thanks so much for watching and bye-bye for now.